Just a heads up, a lot of the information in this video is not canon and part of my own lore. So take a good amount of the things I say about it with a big grain of salt. Except the crashes though. Those, those are canon. Another little note, due to a good portion of Kylogun content that should be in Kylogun, not being in Kylogun, you should expect a lot of just bullets with names on them. Because I cannot get certain images of certain stations. And I can't even name some names of a fucking station. So yeah, enjoy the review, uh, there's a little note, uh, fuck off. This is the end train. Now the end starts at 53rd Street and Potato Brook with a Q. The two then head over to 39th Street, where the R and W joins in. Now on Madison Avenue, the R and N go local, while the Q and W handle Express. Once they get to Myrtle Avenue, the N, Q and R leave the W behind, and at Georgian Avenue, they leave the R behind. Continuing on towards Richards Island, which is the last stop. The trains to the N uses are the R27, R30, PLT1, R40 Slant, R46, PLT4, R68, R68A, KB96, PX1, R143, R160, PSD5, PSD9, and PSD11. Two handfuls this time. The most common train car you see on the N is the R68A. And that's the basic info that- Actually not because late night extension! On late nights, the N train takes over for the R on Whitestone. Since the R becomes a shuttle in West Patad, going all the way to 86th Street, meeting with the 1, 2, and 3 trains. Which is pretty neat to see happen. The N is also pretty fast on Whitestone, and even on Culligan, even with the speed limit. Though on late night, it's a bit more slower on Culligan and Madison Avenue since it has to share the local track with the queue. But who's really going to complain about late night service? During other times, the N train is a... Uh, average. It's not as fast as the K, but it's not as slow as the D. It's just alright. I'll get into the history trip now. The N and Q trains would begin service on June 20th, 1896, running between 17th Avenue and Belmont Avenue on Culligan back then being called the Bayview Line. On June 24th, 1898, Richards Island would open. And now for the end train's first crash, which is actually a pretty major one. On March 10th, 1904, a N and Q trains collided with each other because of someone being bad at switches. 16 people were killed. Finch Avenue and Calgary Street will open on July 30th, 1907. A year later, on September 18th, 1908, Washington Street and Fordham Avenue will open 
as an extension of the Bayview Line. However, these two stations were called the Houston Bridge Line, with Rowland Street opening on August 1st, 1912. And on June 2nd, 1914, Halsey Street and Pants Elastic Avenue will open with the Houston Bridge Line becoming a 2nd Avenue line, with a connection from Fordham Avenue to Calgary Street ending its use in regular service. Belmont Avenue were closed in 1921. Culligan would pretty much stay almost exactly the same until January 8, 1924, when the Madison Avenue line opened running to 16th Street, which was later extended to 53rd Street in February 1929. Now for the signal crisis, something that's going to appear a lot during these reviews. This was basically the result of one of the crashes that was mentioned in the Katrian video. After that happened, the PTA launched an investigation of every signal in the system, and all of the lines that rapidly showed up on screen just now had aging signals that had huge malfunctioning risks. Quite a big amount of signals with malfunctioning risks. And so, on Caligan, and trains were short to Finch Avenue. It couldn't really go via East End to Richards Island because 2nd Avenue was fucked over too. The signals on Caligan will be fixed and restored on January 2nd, 1960, being the fourth line to recover from the crisis. The end was involved in the Stanhope crash, a common thing that will be mentioned in these reviews. On July 10th, 1987, a right gang hijacked the end train and derailed rather brutally on the Stanhope tubes which damaged Stan, the express tracks somehow, and Jerusalem Street, killing 20 passengers. After the crash, N and Q trains were shortened to Myrtle Avenue, with Baltic and Whitestone becoming shuttles. B and D trains replaced Caligan service until 1989. And that's kind of just it. There isn't exactly much information on the N and Q after the 80s, so uh, I'll move on to the other shit. I'll be quick, I love the N. It's a pretty neat line to be near. Sadly, the 7 and 11 don't truly connect to them, but seeing it on an open cut or elevated is a nice thing. Especially on Fitch Avenue. My shots there are just so great, I cannot get enough of them. However, a major downside on the end is interlining with the R&W at like Georgian Avenue. It's kind of slow, but it's livable and like to be. The vast running stock is also pretty good too. Especially the Redbirds on them. I just love Redbirds. I'm a Kennedy resident, okay? What do you expect? Now for the trivia. The end is also voiced by Grand Campery. However, this time he does the Kathleen expression. Which is... Pretty neat. Take a listen. This is Myrtle Avenue. Transfer is available to the Q train. Outside of Lore, the N is younger than the Q. On the June 17, 2021 map, the N in Q only appeared at Ridgewood Island, with the line only visually going as far as until West 10th Street. The N in Q has been involved in the same amount of incidents. That being 5. And that's trivia. Now for the end I'll give it an 8 out of 10. It's a great line and I can't really hate it. This is Abby for Multitopic. You all have a great night. Have a great summer. Enjoy your breaks. And thank you for watching.